avete, salvete por ti. You have heard that it is said, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yet I tell you, the difference is more fundamental than that. You are watching an illusion, words spoken into a metal artifact days, weeks, or perhaps years ago. Yet we all agree that is science, not magic. What's the difference? Let's start by asking, what is science? You may have heard of something called the scientific method involving hypotheses, theories, and laws. But here's the big secret. That's just a funding strategy. It's not actually real. Science means two things. Knowledge about how things work and the process of determining that knowledge using the most reliable methods available. 600 years ago, the idea that the Earth was the center of the universe was science, based on the best methods we had back then, what it looked like, and tradition. Since then, we have realized that those are not good methods for determining what is true, and we have adopted new methods like experimentation, statistical analysis of data, and many others. There's a problem here. This definition seems not only to include everything we know about reality, or think we know, but anything that could exist. Because if something could hypothetically exist, then in that universe it could be studied, which would make it science. This is where the idea comes from that magic is just science we don't understand yet. So let's switch gears and ask what magic is. Magic is defined as the use of abilities beyond comprehension or of the supernatural. Supernatural is defined as that which is beyond the reach of science. But we just said science is knowledge of anything using the best methods available to study it. So that seems to imply magic cannot exist by definition. But that's not fair. We're looking at formal definitions, not how these words are used in practice. For science, that's fine, because it's designed to have specific operational meaning. But with magic, it gets fuzzy. As I'm sure you well know, I'm a fan of science fiction, but I'm also a fan of its magic-based counterpart, fantasy. And in fantasy, I've noticed magic described at three levels. All of us, no matter what culture or time period or fictional universe we come from, has a picture of the way we believe the world to work. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. The pieces fit together and show us a picture of the normal, natural world that makes sense. Then comes along something that doesn't fit into this nice, comfortable picture such as a ring that turns you invisible when you put it on, and also turns you evil. It's like a piece that's shaped weirdly, and made of wood, and on fire. Healing someone with a touch, a burning bush that never goes out, a hammer that always returns to its owner. As a well-known example, the Harry Potter universe is chock full of level one magic. That's what makes it so fantastically whimsical. Often called hard magic, level 2 magic is effectively science that is different from science in our world. It has rules, it can be studied, and it can be used to make technology. Level 2 magic was brought into popularity by everyone's favorite fantasy author, Brandon Sanderson, with his three science magics of Mistborn, Allomancy, Ferrucamy, and Hemalurgy, inspiring others like Brent Weeks' color magic Chromaturgy in the Lightbringer saga. Level 2 magic is essentially level 1 magic that has been analyzed enough to take it from miracle status to science status. There is a paradigm shift, and the puzzle is rearranged to include the pieces that didn't fit before. And the new, more inclusive paradigms allow the characters to understand the world better and use that knowledge to make technology. Levels 1 and 2 seem to support the idea that magic is just science or alternative science we don't understand yet but there is a level three. Modern science has led us to the paradigm that the fundamental realm of our universe 
is a landscape of information being exchanged in ways described by physical laws. Plenty of other things exist, of course. They are emergent from this substrate. If this didn't exist, nothing else could. This philosophy is called physicalism, and in it, everything is ultimately science. Level 3 magic happens in worlds with alternative metaphysics, such as if the fundamental layer of reality is made of minds, acting according to their natures, exerting their will, and competing and forming alliances. This is the supernatural, a substrate of pure spirit from which the natural world emerges as a perceptual construct. In other words, the universe exists because it is an equilibrium of the will of all of the spirits, or perhaps of just one all-powerful spirit. This metaphysical theory is called idealism, and the difference between science and magic is embodied in the difference between physicalism and idealism. Level 3 magic can be found in stories like The Lord of the Rings, The Chronicles of Narnia, and Brandon Sanderson's most recent series, The Stormlight Archive. A universe that is idealismistic has both magic and science. Science is the study of the natural world, and magic is the invocation of the minds making up the supernatural world. That is the difference between science and magic. Before we close, we should notice that a physicalist universe does have minds in it. Our minds. So just like an idealist universe can have science in it, albeit a less solid version, perhaps a physicalist universe can have something like magic in it. Not casting curses or receiving visions of the future or anything like that, but shaping the way people perceive the world. Perhaps the magic of real life is not the purview of wizards or sorcerers or even scientists. Perhaps the magic of real life is in language showmanship, and storytelling. The power to influence what a culture, or even just a single person, views as possible, good, and worthwhile is not in technology, but in storytelling. The magic of reality is in language and art. The magic of reality is language and art. Gratias bobus ago spectatis, iterum autem videbo vos deinde tempora.